please welcome back interviewer Randall Lane and Mohammed Dewiji, President Metel Group. Formal, na formal name, but we're with Mo Duji, who is, uh, I guess, you're the guy everybody here wants to be. Who here, let's play a game. Who wants to be a billionaire? Raise your hand if you want to be a billionaire. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Forbes, so you don't, you don't know if you could trust that information or not, but according to Forbes, we have the youngest billionaire in Africa sitting right next to me, and he's been that way for eight years, so we're waiting for somebody to take him down, guys. We want some younger African billionaires, but until then, you got the king right here. Mo Duji is here. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much, Randall. Uh, all right, so a couple stats from, from our team at Forbes Africa. The 15th richest person in Africa. Uh, the first Tanzanian ever to be on the cover of Forbes. Uh, in 20, that was 10 years ago, and then you appeared again on our Forbes Africa 10th anniversary cover. But the reason we wanted you here, and we so appreciate you coming, is that you're somebody who when you were 25 years old, you know, your father started the business with a very small company, and so all of a sudden, you're in your mid-20s and you're running the company, so in some ways, you represent what this room is, which is people who are doing well, but want to take it to that next level. So I, I really want to kind of just kind of walk through that journey. How do you go from somebody in your 20s, who again, uh, got to, you know, got to a certain stage, but I think you were doing, what, about $30 million in revenue back then? And what's, what's revenue now? Uh, two and a half billion. Two and a half billion. Two and a half billion. So that's a, that's a big journey. So maybe, so tell us, what, what, that was, what was that like when you first sat down in the chair and said, okay, I'm, I'm not driving a car, it's a, it's a nice car, but it's not a sports car. How do I make this thing go really fast? So I, 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 I graduated from Georgetown in 98 with a finance degree, and... Uh, I wanted, can you hear me? Oh uh, yeah, close. Yeah, so um, when I graduated and uh, I had two choices, either to remain in the US or to come back to Africa. Now Africa was very challenging because at that time when you look at Tanzania, the per capita income uh, was $300, $350. So I'm like, how am I going to become a billionaire in an economy where people do not have much money? Uh, so I said, let me start following the money. That, fine, it's 300 bucks or 400 bucks. Where do they spend that money? So I went in uh, and created, my father was a, a trade, he was running a trade house doing soft commodities. So I continued increasing the trading commodity business. So I do sugar, rice, fertilizer, everything from bubble gum to yeast, from tractors to motorcycles. And, but then I felt that there was a need of value addition and manufacturing. Uh, while my father imported edible oils, I went into uh, investment into edible oil refining, soap manufacturing, cooking fats, margarines. At that time, Unilever and Procter & Gamble were very big. So we competed with them and we've cornered them with homegrown brands. I got into textiles. I was always wondering that why uh, Tanzania has cotton or Africa has cotton, but we are importing clothing from, uh, from China. So I said, okay, what are the main ingredients uh, to run a successful textile business? A, you need to have cotton. Many countries have cotton in Africa, Zambia, Mozambique, Tanzania. Two, relatively competitive labor. Tanzania today is $100, $150. Three, power. Tanzania is nine cents, China is nine cents. Uh, India is nine cents. And technology is, is, is capital. So I invested. So now I do ginning, spinning, weaving, processing, mercerizing, dyeing, knitting, printing, and garmenting. <laughs> but the best part about this is that while I'm doing all this, I'm employing 4,000 people. And so this is a big impact. And, and trust me, now we're producing over 100 million meters of cloth, which is 100,000 kilometers of cloth. So I could wrap the world twice with the, with the cloth that we produce. So slowly, 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 I got into... A, I got into plastics. I said, look, Coke is there, Pepsi is there. 
Eh, I need to create, so, so you know in the US, my name is Mohammed, they call me Mo, so I went with Mo Cola and Mo Extra. And today we're selling over a billion bottles eh, of uh, carbonated soft drinks. Mm. And I'm into water, into juices, into carbonated drinks, but everything from PET, HDP, LDP, and so on and so forth. But how do you, but how do you again, how do you make that link? I mean, you're sitting here, textiles, and, 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 and you go, you know, and you vertically integrate to jump then to soft drinks. Like, what, what was that mindset? What were you looking for? So I, I was looking at uh, Your Excellency. Um, at that time, I realized, you know, Coke and Pepsi, I could outprice them. Uh, so I said to create a, 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 a B type of a cola and to be competitive. So what I do is, if they sell 300 milliliters, I sell 350 milliliters, and I give them a slight discount. And the quality of the product is good, the taste is good, so I become competitive and I can sell. Uh, so similarly... So give, give the customer a little more for a little less. Correct. And, 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 and that's, that's a value for pretty money. simple formula, that's yes. good. Um, and then slowly, slowly, so we got into... So I have maybe 40 different types of manufacturing industries, uh, Eastern Central Africa. And then I went into agriculture. And I invested in, if you guys know what sisal is, sisal is a natural fiber, predominantly was used in the shipping industry for ropes and twines. But then it got into the elevator cords, it got into the building industry, uh, the car manufacturing industry, the dashboard and the sideboards. So today I am the world's largest sisal producer from Tanzania. Then we do tea, we have tea gardens, we do tea, we export to Europe, uh, we are also into cashew nuts, so we process cashews into cashew kernels and export the kernels to the United States. So value addition, jobs, competitive advantage, but the challenge was capital, because at that time, I remember when I got back, a Barclays bank could only lend me $2 million, because the paid up capital was $10 million. So I'm like, okay, how am I going to grow to become a multi-billion dollar company if I do not have capital? So I slowly, slowly started going to South Africa. The financial markets are more complex there and started borrowing money, et cetera, et cetera. Now that relationship has gone into uh, no, uh, north of a quarter of a billion dollars that they lend me and very competitively. So, so that, that also played a big role in my growth. Uh, but generally, what I'm proud the most is that now uh, the conglomerate uh, employs 38,000 people. Hmm. That's, uh, you know, in a, in a continent, again, of 1.4 billion with so many, you know, 70% under 30, we need to create hundreds of millions of jobs. So that, that's, you know, that's a formula. Imagine if this room all each, you know, if you each employ 38,000 people, we've now solved everything. So let's, let's go do that. How did you, uh, first of all, how old are you, remind the group the, how old so, you are? So when I, I'm, right now I'm 47, uh, so I graduated uh, from university and went straight to Tanzania and started the business. What, what so, so we did not have a 30 under 30 list when you were under 30. Yeah. These guys all have an advantage that you didn't have, which is they have each other to kind of lean on. Who helped you, you know, because when you were doing this, it was very unusual for somebody your age to be playing for, for those big stakes, uh, kind of, so who, where did you get kind of your, your, your North Star? So I'll tell you something, my, my, my mentor was my father. My father uh, took me to China while I was 12 years old. And I promise to you, China then is very different than China today. At that time, you would not be able to differentiate between a guy and a girl, because they all wear, wore the combats, they all had the same haircuts. The women did not have any, you know, lipstick or any makeup on. You could not differentiate. And so I actually started getting trained by my father from a very, very young age. And that really helped me. And then I got the proper formal education. But every Christmas, every summer, I would go back and work with him. And that gave me a big advantage. Now, you were, a, uh, you were an MP yes. uh, while you were doing all this. Uh, we have some great politicians here, and we have some great entrepreneurs, but why, why, why are you mixing the two, or why were you mixing the two? Sure. <laughs> very, very but the two hard jobs uh, that you, you put together there. It's a very good point. So I was born in central Tanzania in a place called Singida. My grandfather was born there. I actually never made it to the hospital. I was born at home with a midwife, and I almost died because uh, they miscalculated. The umbilical cord was around me. 
And to cut the story short, I'm alive today. But, <laughs> but when I went back, when I graduated from university, I'm a Muslim, so we go back and pray uh, for, for the people that have passed away, like my grandfather. And when I went there, it's a small town, it's a peri urban constituency. So you drive five miles out and you see rural areas. So this is a, a story I want to share with you. I met an old man and there was a puddle of yellow water. And this man was kneeling down and he had a plate and he had a bucket and he was scooping that water into the bucket. So I asked him, first I greeted him and I asked him, sir, what are you doing? And he says, this is the water that you know, we drink. And I said, no, and he, he felt that I didn't believe him. So he said, come home. And I went home and I saw used PET bottles, yellow water, people were drinking. And I said, but who's your member of parliament? Now in Tanzania, you have to be an MP to become a minister. Actually, the minister of water was the member of parliament of that constituency. And when I started researching, I realized there was a lot of waterborne diseases, people were dying, there was no proper education, et cetera, et cetera. So I went into politics, I promise to you, I stayed in politics for 15 years and uh, uh, retired from politics. But the principal reason was to go and do impact and help. So I, I didn't have to wait for our government funding. I was spending my own money. Accessibility of water went to 92%. We had two secondary schools. We ended up with 22 secondary schools in the 10 years that I was there. We fought malaria. We fought, you know, people did not believe at that time HIV. People thought once you get HIV, you're going to die. And I was trying to explain to them, look, you can get on medication and you can live a normal life. And you have to take care of yourself. So that is the reason why I became an MP. I, I, I get it, actually. You know, your you're, you're excellency, you're lucky he's not Botswana and you have a presidential candidate here. You know, very, uh, you're, you're, you're very good. You're very good. Uh, I reread I re the uh, Forbes cover story we did about you. And one thing that struck me was kind of your work day. You work really hard. <laughs> what, can, can you walk everyone through like a typical you know, Moduji work day? You know, I'll tell you one secret. Huh? You can have all the acumen, you can be as intelligent as it comes, but if you're not going to put that hard work and struggle, you will never make it. There is no magic to it. I, I, I start my day at uh, 5 a.m. That is when I was kidnapped at the gym. <laughs> but 5 a.m. in the morning, I go and do my 10K run. And then uh, by 6.30, I'm in the office. I have thousands of emails that I need to clear. And because I have 112 divisions in the, in the company, and I have three board meetings where we go through the financials, the balance sheet, the P&L, et cetera, et cetera. And then later in the afternoon is when I meet people internally. And then in the evenings, I meet people that want to come and see me. So I used to put averagely 100-hour weeks. And sometimes you get so tired, you fall asleep. I have a bed in my office. I would fall asleep and change uh, the tie the next day, but the suit is the same and maybe a shirt, <laughs> you know, and you continue. So, so my advice to all you young people is that there is no magic in success. We have to really, really hustle and work hard. You, you, you mentioned the kidnapping, and I saw a bunch of people go, what's with that? So maybe you want to tell that in 30 seconds. Yeah, uh, so it was 5 a.m. In, uh, in the morning. I went to the gym. It's the only time I, I drove. Tanzania is a very safe country, no security issues. And some random guys took me for nine days. Uh, I was blindfolded for nine days. My feet were, I was stripped naked. My feet were tied. My hands were tied. And you know what, uh, why I love my country the most is you know, usually when a rich guy gets kidnapped or something happens to him, people don't care. But I'm indebted to East Africa, to Africa, because the poor of the poor were praying for me. And, uh, and I think I'm here today is because of the poor praying for me, and with God's help, I'm alive today. They left me without a ransom, eh? very close to the state house uh, at uh, 2 in the morning after 9 days, and that's when I got to see uh, so it was very, very terrible. But I'm, 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 I'm happy. Uh, I've got a new life, uh, and I, I think I could be a better person. How did, how did that change your perspective on life? It had to. 
I, so the money, the money is not important anymore. It's, it's all about what I can give back and uh, how much impact I can make. And I'm doing a lot of investments, like the, the Agri Fund that I'm looking at. It's big impact, helping people, and that's the way I look at life. Uh, well, last question we have, you, you have, you know, you're creating 38,000 jobs. So you, you have, you know, you have 38,000 people working for you, creating more jobs. You know, so there's an impact you can make in business, but you also have philanthropy. You're one of the first Africans to take the giving pledge, which for those who don't know, it's Warren Buffett of Bill Gates and Melinda Gates. Uh, came up with the idea that you pl you have pledged publicly pledged that you will give away half or more of your money during your lifetime or when you die. What what t you know? Tell me about your philosophy about philanthropy and how you balance uh, making impact with business versus philanthropy. Yeah, so philanthropy is very 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 important. I give uh, scholarships to kids that cannot afford to go to university. So we have hundreds of kids that we pay tuition fees, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We support also uh, big time cancer for children and, and wells. So I have a vision that I, in the next five to 10 years, I want accessibility of water in Tanzania to be 100%. All right, well, let's make it happen. Uh, we appreciate your time, we appreciate you coming here. Remember, you know, again, uh, success to your point, uh, is only what you can do. You know, you, when you make a billion dollars, you can't spend that much money. It's literally impossible. It, it, success really gives you then the opportunity to make change. And clearly, you're at that point in life where you're making change. So, guys, he's been the l youngest billionaire in Africa for eight years. So, so can somebody please dethrone him and create that change? So we're looking at all of you. So, thank you, Mo. So, Mo, thank you for being an inspiration to this group. Uh, keep it up and keep gunning for him, guys. Uh, you know, somebody can take take the throne, but we appreciate you flying in today. Thank you. Moduji.